The ANC's Felice Kaunda was yesterday re-elected as Etiquini executive mayor. Kaunda retaining his position and helping his party to buck the trend seen in Gauteng metros where the ANC was ousted in favor of the DA. So a last minute deal brokered between the ANC and Pelani Mabundla of the Abantu Batu Congress saw him sneak in as deputy mayor of Etiquini defeating the IFP's Mtudusi in Corsi. Was it treachery of politics that saw the plan to kick the ANC out fail? Let's get a sense of what actually happened. Joining us for this discussion is Dean McPherson. He's the DA's KZN provincial leader and Mtudusi in Corsi, the IFP's Etiquini spokesperson. To both of our guests, thanks very much indeed for your time. Mr. Nkosi, I want to begin with you this morning to give us a sense of your version of events, of how things unfolded before those election results were announced in council. Well, thank you so much, and good morning to you and uh, uh, all the TV viewers and my colleague, uh, Dean. Um, People of Etegwin have made it clear that they don't want to see ANC governing Etegwin municipality. And uh, the results have shown that uh, for them not getting 50% plus one was that uh, they want to see other parties uh, in government. And unfortunately, um, we met as political parties to, see, to say we need to do the will of the people, of which we need to come together and vote for one candidate and change the ANC in the government. Because people of Etiwin are complaining about service delivery. Remember, we are talking about metro here, but the metro that cannot service people of Etiwin, protests are always there. People are complaining about water. There are so many things. The city is dirty. There are a lot of things that I can talk. However, when we met as political parties, we said we are all going to be together. We understand DA on the opposition side, it's leading us. Let us support the candidate from the DA. And the talks were smoothly until yesterday, or the day before yesterday, where we got um, information that uh, people like Councillor uh, Mavunda, the president of ABC, and other smaller parties are no more gonna vote with us. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, seeing him having only two seats in council, nominated to, uh, by ANC to uh, occupy ESCO seat and on that way to being a deputy mayor. But uh, he also able to swing other smaller parties to vote with them. I must say that also Asian SA, I think he did, they did not also come to party. They decided to went away uh, along with Mavunda. However, whether we lost yesterday, uh, but we have done the will of the people and we are not going to uh, sit down and fold our arms. We are going to challenge the council, all the wrongdoings. Yeah. So there's a lot of he said, she said going around, isn't there? there? There are reports of what the agreement was going into that inaugural council meeting on Monday and how things changed up until the time the meeting was held on Wednesday. Dean McPherson, the agreement was that um, Pilani Mabundla from the a ABC would vote alongside the other smaller parties in favor of the DA. Was there that discussion, which Nicole Graham has uh, spoken about, that discussion where the DA was approached by Pilani Mabundla for an executive seat in exchange for his support? Yes, uh, Michelle, and good morning to yourself and uh, my friend and Doom Corsi from the IFP. <clears throat> Absolutely, that did take place last week. It was brought to my attention and our provincial leader, Francois Rogers' attention, that Mr. Mavunda had wanted a seat on the executive committee, one of the DA seats, uh, in exchange for his support. Now, I mean, that uh, would uh, be foolhardy for us to give up uh, a seat uh, on the executive committee um, when those seats are used to, uh, to represent uh, voters that had voted for us. Uh, so we correctly turned down that request. It was uh, unreasonable. Uh, and yet Mr. Mavundla on Monday was still steadfast that he would continue to vote the ANC out of power. Those were his, his words. He's on record, public record. Uh, in fact, I think on your uh, news station, he said so to one of your journalists. And yet 48 hours later, instead of the vote, voting the ANC out of power, Mr. Mavundla is voting the ANC into power. So one has to ask what changed. And just before that council meeting, Mr. Mavundla sat outside in a very cordial meeting with my 
myself and uh, colleagues from the IFP and other political parties and continue to pledge the support to removing the ANC from power. And that's why I termed it yesterday the treachery of politics, because instead of putting the people's interests first, we had politicians putting their interests first and what they could get out of uh, the deal. Uh, and that's a real shame for the residents of Etigweni, because as Mr. Nkosi has explained, the ANC did not get a majority. People did not want the ANC back in power. And all those parties that have put them back into power are going to have to go back and answer to the electorate. I mean, is all, you, you calling it the treachery of politics, is all fair in love and war, so to speak, when it comes to these kinds of negotiations? Unless, of course, there is money involved. These are also allegations that you and uh, Mr. Nkosi have I've spoken to, to my colleague, Pauline Gambi, about, in fact, just yesterday. Uh, Ndung Korsi, can you tell us again what happened insofar as the exchange of money is concerned? You told Pauline Gambi that even the IFP was approached. Well, um, not only on the local leadership. Also, our provincial leaders, uh, leader was approached, uh, but he refused. Because it's not about ourselves here. It's about uh, to save the people. But unfortunately, it's easy to other people, especially the smaller parties, to uh, back in with, with the voters. So definitely, there was money involved. You can't have someone who's got two, only two seats and then jumping the ship. You'll see him uh, occupying a, a seat of another political party. It tells you a lot. All these smaller parties, we all agreed that, no, let's go on and, and take the ANC out of power. But they, yesterday, hey, they were changing. You could see that they are fighting even with us, even when we are raising issues in the council, because they were keen that they wanted to see Mayor Kaunda being elected. Well, we cannot say much, but uh, even though we lost as opposition parties, we are proud of us and also our voters that we have done the will of the people. Let, let me just point out to our viewers as well, Pilani Mavundla is someone that both of our guests have been talking about throughout this interview. We're also going to be in discussion with him at 8 o'clock this morning. But we also spoke to um, the ANC's chairperson in the province, Mdumisen uh, Tuli. thank you Ayanda, on the sidelines there. And this is what he had to say to us. I, I want to bring you the bite in just a second, but I've also got um, it written down verbatim, what he had to say in that interview. And this, and, and this actually uh, concerns you, Mr. Uh, Nkosi, because he says, this is a quote, we knew at the end of the process the IFP would have difficulty accepting defeat with this alliance between them and the DA and the EFF. He says, I saw a clip where the chairperson of the IFP said that they were being offered money to vote with the ANC. This is a lie, says Mr. Ntuli. The IFP thought they would be kingmakers in the province, and naturally they are always working hard to dethrone the ANC. Um, so it, it's a case of sour grapes, according to the, to the ANC. What, what do you say, sir? <laughs> well, uh, our chairperson cannot lie. He also told me that he was a fat man. And these people were saying who, even sorry, to me... Sorry, Mr. Nkosi, who told you he was offered money? No, I'm saying, as what Mr. Tumsen is saying, yeah. that is a lie. My, my chairperson also told me right. that he was offered money, but right. he refused. And I also received calls that I'm offered the position of a deputy mayor. Mm. I said to them, it's not about myself. It's about what the party want me to do and the voters. So they can't say it's a sour grape because we've got nothing to lose. We are, I'm still going to be in ESCO. We are still going to be in an opposition. What, what sour grip is he talking about? So they know that they did not win clearly yesterday, but it was all, all the shenanigans that were involved in, in order for them to be saved, to retain only one metro, because they were only going to have one metro that we are talking about, of which is the Tegwin. Mm. So, so you're talking a lot about being offered money. Who were having these discussions? Who was having these discussions with you? Well, I cannot mention the names who were in the meetings uh, with my provincial chairperson, but he was approached, and uh, he, he, he even turned, that, turned down that offer. Those who called me in the meeting, I said to them, I can't come there because I'm not representing myself. 
and I only represent IFP. So if they want to see me, I need to come with the leadership of the IFP. And I told them that this, the discussions now are not also handled by myself, they are handled by the provincial chairperson and also our secretary general. Why would you not want to reveal who is involved in making these offers of money? Come again? Why would you not want to reveal who is making these offers of money to you and people like your provincial chairperson? Well, to me, I was offered a deputy mayor position, mm. but I know that the provincial chairperson was offered a huge, a huge money, but he turned, it, he turned them down. Who offered you the position of, dep uh, of, of deputy chairperson, of deputy mayor? Even the councillor Sabela said, you can, t you can name whatever. We can even give you anything that you want, uh, even a position of a deputy mayor. I said, it's not about myself. Who said that to you? It was councillor Sabela who called me. Councillor Sabelo. Yes, what and even and even and even uh, a previous CTM called me that uh, he, he was approached to say he must raise funds. So then they go and talk to uh, ANC leadership, and I, I was saying to him, I'm surprised you were fired by the same leadership. Now they come back to you to say, go and raise funds, so then they go and talk to leadership of the IFP, and you'll be wasting your time, because IFP leadership, it's a leadership of integrity. They are not going to take that man. You're talking about Tandukolo Sabelo? Tandukolo Sabelo called me to say we can give you anything. Dean McPherson, who was involved in making these offers to you and the Democratic Alliance? Well, no one uh, would make offers to us. Uh, we, don't, uh, you know, we don't operate like that. But what a number of the smaller parties uh, had come to us and to uh, Mr. Nkosi and informed us uh, during the deliberations was that they were being offered money by the ANC to, um, to go and uh, support them. And they quite rightfully turned, turned that down. Uh, and what we know is that the ANC had done is that they had wanted to collapse the meeting on Monday to try and rectify the, uh, the quagmire that they found themselves in, because they knew if they'd had that election on Monday that they would have lost, which is why they sabotaged the tent, cut the power, and tried to delay it. They then had to call off all of their tenderpreneurs, and you know, we know that the Durban, unfortunately, is tenderpreneur capital of South Africa now, and they were all asked to stump up money uh, and to help right uh, the problem that they were facing or else that they were going to lose their contract. So there's no, I have no reason to doubt the veracity of those smaller parties that had come to us in, like, in the likes of the IFP uh, and had told us uh, those stories. Um, uh, they had no reason to lie to us. Uh, but it's very clear the, uh, the treachery, uh, the trickery uh, and the shenanigans that took place you know, really cast a doubt on, on, on the ability to govern over the next five years. And that's really what this is about, Michelle, is how does the ANC uh, govern a city where they've given up a seat on the executive committee uh, to Mr. Mavundla? They're down to four seats now. The DA has three. Uh, the, uh, the IFP and the EFF have one. Uh, they don't have a majority now, essentially, in the executive committee. Um, and, and we really face an unstable time which is not good for residents. Um, and we know that only in the chaos uh, do the crooks benefit. And that's really what our concern is going forward. So we're going to make sure that we are vigorous in opposition. We're going to make sure that we continue to build uh, the opposition benches um, in Etegweni, because let me tell you what, in six months' time or eight months' time, motions of no confidence may start to be put towards the municipality, and people's minds might have changed. So this is a very fragile position, um, and the ANC are going to have to watch themselves and the people that they've brought into the executive committee, like Mr. Mavundla, um, and uh, they're going to have to hold up their end of the bargain because it's a lot easier to get someone into the executive committee than it is to get out. Uh, and I think the ANC are going to face a uh, many headwinds uh, in the next couple of months in governing the city. Let's, let's take a listen to what Ndumiseni Tuli had to say to me a little earlier on, uh, on the question of the IFP um, and how the election unfolded uh, just yesterday. Just take a listen. We knew that uh, at the end of the process, the IFP would have a difficulty to graciously accept defeat 
of this unholy alliance they were leading together with the GA and the EFF. And I know, I saw a clip yesterday where the national chairperson of the IFP was making these strange allegations that they were being offered money in order to vote with the ANC. It's a, it's a blue lie. The IFP uh, thought that uh, they were going to be kingmakers in this province, and because naturally they are always working very hard to depose and destroy the African National Congress, they thought that this was a golden opportunity for them to achieve that objective, which didn't happen. And I'm sure, besides that, they are saying now there were money offered to them. Just watch. They are going to look for another explanation to justify their defeat, which they are going to be suffering in the next few days when we move on to the north to take over some of the districts that are currently under their leadership. So that's the ANC's response to these incredibly serious allegations of offers of positions and money in exchange for support in that council sitting that unfolded yesterday. Final uh, comments from both the IFP and the DA now, please, on what the way forward is in terms of um, these allegations that you've made. And Mr. Nkosi, you can begin. Well, firstly, let me uh, say to the provincial secretary of the ANC, we congratulate them by taking the member of the ANC from ESCO and put Mavunda. Let's see what will happen from now uh, in that council. I'm part of the council. We wanted to see how are they going to work. But I wanted to say that uh, there, there, there's nothing wrong for us to sit on the opposition bench. And it, it, it's not about myself. It's not about certain individuals. It's about ensuring that right things are being done in the table. Going forward, we are going to sit on the opposition bench and ensure that we take up issues. We are not going to leave anything. So they can talk, as they, as, as, as they are saying, they are going to the not, not to take some of the municipalities. It's okay, but here in Eteguini, I'm going to represent a strong voice of the people who voted for IFP. Dean McPherson, very quickly from you. Well, I mean, let me just say, Michelle, that, you know, brown envelopes is, uh, you know, part and parcel of what the ANC does. We've seen that from Nazarek to uh, politics in the Western Cape. I mean, they have a well-documented history. So... Uh, it is not uh, unbelievable for them to do something like that in Etiquini. And over time, these things will uh, come to light, I have no doubt. But really, the ANC uh, are going to have a very difficult road ahead. Uh, parties like the DA uh, and the IFP and other political parties are going to hold their feet to the fire. And I have no doubt that there's going to be serious ructions within the ANC's caucus in giving a seat away on the executive committee, in handing over the deputy mayor to someone who uh, referred to the ANC as Amasela. So I, I think that it's a difficult road ahead, and I think that the, uh, the governance of the city may well change, certainly within the next 12 months. The IFP is introducing Corsi, the DA is Dean McPherson. Thank you to both of our guests for your time. The story in Etequini is far from over, despite the election of the ANC's and Kholisi Kaunda as mayor just yesterday.